Good morning, mine fans. Here's Rush, your favorite one-legged miner. And today we're gonna to have a little talk about uh, the history of the mines here and the surface work that used to be here. So for today's uh, little discussion, I'm standing atop the uh, rock pile where the Columbia mine operation used to be. And we're gonna talk about that and uh, what used to be here and how they made it work. It's really fascinating. So this area here was originally mined over back in the early 1900s, late 1800s by the Tacopa Consolidated Mining Company. And they shut down in 1928 when the railroad, the Tidewater and Tonopah finally went bust, leaving the mine no way to get to market. There was a depression coming. So the area sat dormant for a while. Back then it was pretty crude operation. You know, they ran out here with, you know, no, no real power, carbide lamps, uh, living in the elements for the most part. But, you know, but again, look at the views they had. Lazy mine dog sleeping over there on the rock. Another one causing mischief out there somewhere. But um, anyway, in uh, about World War II, the Anaconda Company came in here and reopened and went to the lead and uh, silver here in a big way. And one of the things they did was they built a power plant on this location right here, a big power shop where they had a uh, big diesel motor, they had some generators on these platforms. They had fuel tank back up there for the generators. They had water tanks here to uh, run water to the underground you know, mining equipment, the drills and such. They had compressors here. They had the whole nine yards right here. They completely modernized and mechanized the mine, pretty much state-of-the-art standards you know, for the 1940s and 50s. They made the bigger shaft over there by my trailer and ran that one down to 765 feet. And then off a side drift, they dropped again further down, all the way to 950. They were going to, I guess, 1250, chasing a vein, but it didn't pan out. But they put some investment in here to operate this mine for war production. So this power center here would have produced not only the compressed air that they needed for the mines, but all the electricity needed, not only for this mine, but for the War Eagle mine on the adjacent property, if we look way over there, you can see the upper ore bin for the War Eagle mine. That's, that's a good distance away. That's, that's easily you know, a mile and some change. And what they did was they ran the electricity from here over some power lines, most of which have been cut down, but some of the poles are still there. They ran that power all the way over to the War Eagle's western portal there. They ran it in through that upper shaft and they stepped it down, ran it down the shaft uh, to the lower level down in 690 and used it to power that area of the mine and the hoist that went uh, all the way down to you know, 1190 at the bottom. So War Eagle did have some electricity there uh, during the later op operation, 1940s through 1957, and it all came from over here. This mine is completely self-contained. They weren't getting power from town, you know, Tacopa, 10 miles back that way. Little power that came out and ran along Furnace Creek Road, but uh, this mine generated its own power. And that just shows the, the, the infrastructure they put in here to make this place operate, you know, in this environment was just something else. And unfortunately, the looters and strippers have taken everything that was here. You know, all, all the motors, all the tanks, all the wires, you know, the, uh, the electrical equipment itself, the transformers, you know, all gone, all stolen, all wrecked by, you know, collectors and scrappers and meth heads. So what we have is this today. I've got pictures shows what this area used to look like, and it was pretty comprehensive. I mean, there were several buildings in and around this spot here. Another one right down, you can see the from the concrete structure down here in this excavation from one of the buildings. And if you look around the corner over here, let me get there. I need to walk faster, but it's nice out here this morning. There was another building sitting right down here, and I'm not sure what that building contained originally, but in the interest of repurposing, this is going to be a fantastic uh, shooting range down here, and I will be putting some uh, targets down there for myself and you know, select guests to come out here and use. We'll see about doing that in the fall when it gets a little cooler. Now, 
Anaconda also paved the roads out here. There's one road that runs all the way over there and comes out down into Furnace Creek, uh, about a mile and a quarter down. Got another one that runs from the, the Grant and the War Eagle all the way down to Furnace Creek down there. And those were all paved roads. And Furnace Creek out here was actually paved all the way from Tacopa out to the War Eagle's eastern portal around the corner of that mountain ridge. And that was a good bit of distance. Uh, you know, from the intersection of China Ranch out here, it was five miles, and then they paved another three miles to get up to the War Eagle's east portal. And then they paved the two roads up here too. Hey, hop along. So Anaconda put that investment in and they did that, uh, you know, basically gratis for the county and also they could run their trucks. And the remnants of the pavement is still there. Uh, however, the county only maintains it up to China Ranch Road right now. So for the last uh, five miles coming out here, it's you know, pretty much whatever it is. You know, the remnants of the pavement, uh, they dumped some sand on it, made it a nice smooth dirt road, but last year's monsoons took all that sand off. What well, took them months to put down, took the storms about a week to get rid of. But this was actually a pretty you know, bustling operation you know, back in the 50s. The little town site down there at uh, the single man's camp, which is also gone now. You had a fair number of buildings down there. I'll walk over and take a look at that. And all the miners that lived here pretty much lived on site at the camp that would have been you know, down there. The only thing left is that concrete vault building off in the distance. That was a, a cement building used for the payroll of the mine. And because it was a cement block building, it uh, couldn't be taken down as easily as the rest of the buildings. The rest were houses you know, for the miners. And Anna kind of kept a caretaker out here until about 1972 when they finally you know, said they figured they weren't going to come back. They let the buildings uh, be used by the Western Talc employees, the Western Talc mine over there, until about 1978. And when Western Talc closed and their employees left, the buildings down here were vacant. But uh, squatters moved in, you know, this being California, even back then. Anaconda basically said, hey, we're not going to play that game. They put a sign up, uh, free building materials. And everybody from Tacopa came out here and tore the buildings down. And you can still see the remains of them in some of the buildings in Tacopa Heights today. Even the miner George Ross, who co-wrote the book on Tacopa Mines with uh, historian Ken Legner, recounts in his book how he came out here and took some of the buildings down and used it to build his place. So it was a common practice, you know, here in the area, and that's why there's nothing down there now, but, you know, squatters being what squatters are, you know, the buildings would have been burned or trashed. Uh, so it was, the writing was on the wall as soon as the caretaker left, but it was noteworthy that Anaconda did keep a caretaker out here from 1957 until 1972. They had some plans, at least then, of possibly coming back. The only reason they shut down out here was in 1957, uh, the government closed the strategic lead reserve. The government used to stockpile lead for future war efforts, and they were buying as much as Anaconda could pull out of here. And in 1950, so Anaconda was running some pretty good operations, trying to you know cash in on that, bring as much lead out of here as they could get, and as much zinc as they could get, and little bits of silver and iron ore. And in 1957, when the government uh, ceased buying that lead, Anaconda's biggest uh, customer went away. And this mine was no longer profitable just due to the distance where it was. So they shut it down. But they always had plans to come back. They never did, though. And unfortunately, Anaconda itself went away. They had invested pretty heavily in a large Chilean silver mine, which at that time was the richest copper, I'm sorry, copper mine. Uh, largest copper mine in the world at the time in Chile. And the Chilean government eventually turned around and nationalized it like a lot of these uh, banana republics were prone to doing. And Anaconda lost their stake in that operation. They were eventually given a pittance by subsequent governments down there, but wasn't enough. They were bought out by Alco, which then became Alcoa. Or I guess Alcoa then became Alco. And at the time, Anaconda was also running the mines up in Butte, and they had that big uh, Berkeley pit down there where they'd done huge open pit mining through the old uh, Butte workings. 
and massively deep hole out there. You can look it up on the internet, it's still there, it's a tourist attraction. Well, unfortunately, Alco came in and they pulled the pumps out of the lower levels of the mines there, and the water started to rise and eventually filled the Berkeley pit pretty much completely up. And that water is full of heavy metals and acids and toxic to the point where they've got to put bird bombs out there 24 seven. Uh, Cause the birds will come by, especially like the migratory geese, they'll land in the water, they die. It's a super fun site, which means the government uh, is taking our tax dollars to try to mitigate it and clean it up. And they'll be doing it till the end of time. That's the foresight of the folks at Alcoa. And there were a couple of other big open pits that uh, Anaconda also owned, which Alco did the same thing on. So there's like three of those big environmental disasters out there somewhere. And uh, Alco was eventually bought out uh, by British Petroleum. So they're now, BP owns the unfunded liability of the Berkeley pit and two others out there in Nevada. And ironically, they still own uh, a residual here where if I were to open this mine up and start extracting ore again, uh, they would be entitled to 5% of any uh, net profits that I made out here. That's in the deed and ran with the property. So, of course, I don't intend to operate this mine anymore. There is some Galena down there, but it's not profitable for me to try to bring it up. And this mine's done its work. So now I'll just keep it here for the history. And I'm just going to live out here and welcome tourists and enjoy the sunrises and the sunsets. Oh, look, there's our sun coming up now. Get ready to bake and blister the camp for the day. And I will recover uh, my mine dogs. You know, that one's right there. Uh, other one is out there you know, tearing up the desert looking for lizards and mice and other things you can chase. And I'm going to sit back and I'm going to enjoy this beautiful Sunday out here. And it's nice and relaxing. I sit on my, my park bench out here with my view of the valley. Weather station right there. And I'm just going to enjoy the day. And I hope you're having a great day out there. And if you're in the area, yeah, drop me a line. Come on out and visit. Just uh, touch base with me first, eh? Thanks. Y'all have a great day.